Today I'm adding on a remote valve from my Gale 4625 skid steer. We bought this new from ourselves and uh, had the parts to do this for a little bit now and got started on it about a year ago and then needed to use the skid steer and didn't get very far. They're definitely a handy device to machine to have around. So let me grab a flashlight. Ow. So rather than trying to find an original kit for a machine this old, which who knows, maybe I could have gotten one. I am going with an electric over hydraulic valve. Keep it simple. So what I did was I had a piece of uh, scrap metal from another project sitting around, made up this plate. I wanted it thick because I was going to be threading it. So that worked out good because the back mounting bolt is underneath where I wanted to mount the the uh, valve. And so I couldn't have a head bolt or bolt. There's already a uh, mountain flange here for the, the original valve, the optional valve that could have been on these. If it was a 4625 SX or a DX. And uh, so I was gonna use those original holes like I say, the bolt, would they're not threaded or anything, so the bolt head would have been sticking on top. So now the bolt's coming up from underneath, and I just drilled and tapped this uh, piece of plate steel to thread the bolt in there. This one just goes through. And then, since they were going down and I would not be able to, I don't know, reach, or also over in here would not be able to put nuts on the bottom, the thick plate allowed me to drill and tap those holes so that the base for this valve uh, just threads right into that and bolts down nice it's all nice and solid um, so I got her got her pretty well set there started wiring on it I gotta figure out there's some extra pigtails here for other options been looking through the service manual and stuff they are they're coded well they have numbers on all the wires to pick my juice up off from I was kind of hoping I had something like over there the bucket and the booms both have uh, solenoids on them to lock them out when you're not in the seat with the safety bar down and I kind of wanted to pick up juice from that and uh, that way the remote wouldn't work unless you're in a seat with a safety bar down and uh, not having much life finding finding even finding these things in the uh, wiring diagram so I don't know what's going on there so I'll just have to probably test them out and find out what's hot and what's not. But in case you're wondering, I got my head underneath there, yes. Safety uh, stop is in place. So the boom doesn't come down. And then the cab, as soon as you tip it up, it has this mechanism here that automatically engages to keep it from coming back down on you. So definitely makes it nice to work on pretty easy to get to everything once that cab's tipped up out of the way and the arms are up like that so last night I made up new hoses once again good thing to have your own hose machine um, because what I got to do is uh, I think this is a cross valve if I remember right looking up to see what all I needed to do this this is your power beyond port here, and then they have a return port right in it. And that's how Gale originally did it was you got to put the adapter sleeve in there and you pull your pressurized oil off, send it over to your valve, and then the oil has to return back to go through the system and end up in the reservoir. So you take this plug out and that's where the return oil comes back and then it comes up through this fitting here and goes back to the reservoir. So I should have everything to do that right. I've got all the fittings added onto the base of this uh, electro, uh, solenoid type valve. So should be a matter of just running some hoses. And then I also got my hoses made to go up. I did buy, people often ask me uh, if it's, if you can get parts for Gale stuff. And I was, uh, I went ahead and got OEM, uh, the steel lines that go on the boom to take it up for the remotes because it just, uh, 
oh, having hoses flopping around and trying to stuff them through in the original position, keep them out of the way. Seemed like it was gonna be a bit of a challenge and uh, they already had the mounting places in place. All you had to do was just get the lines and uh, the clamps and mount it and they weren't really that bad, but I was able to get them. Um, so that was not an issue. So maybe I could have gotten an original valve the original valve ran off a foot valve or a foot lever and I'm gonna mount a switch on the right T-bar that runs the bucket and the boom so that I can just hopefully rock it with my thumb and be able to run that all and um, not have to have the uh, stuff bouncing around down by my foot or running cables and stuff like that. So I guess the nice thing about the electric, even if that position doesn't work out, I can find a spot in the uh, uh, instrument cluster to mount a switch kind of pain in the butt to have to reach over and activate that so I'm, I'm going to put my best effort into getting it on the t-bar there but i guess i will see about i think i'll see about mounting a couple of hoses getting this thing plumbed up make sure i made my hoses right from Gale just to make sure I was gonna get the right thing and it's looking like it's the wrong thing that's better That one doesn't fit. <laughs> what the heck? I'll hook up the pressure line. I'm probably going to wish I'd put a 90 degree on this one. And come close to the block there. 45. God dang it. Well, never a dull moment. The hose ain't going to quite fit going straight out. So I guess I'll adapt it to be in a 45. Put some pipe goo on here. Now my hose is probably way too long. Yes. Yes it is. I'll see if this hose uh, if it made this hose right.
Yeah, that one's much easier. They're both hooked up. Routed in there pretty good. Missing the fuel line. Comes up along the fuel tank. Just need to tighten these fittings here. And that part will be done. Let's see about getting that other line in now that I've uh, redone it. Decided to go with just a O-ring boss instead of uh, using the adapter. And now probably, hopefully, the line won't be too short. I should have used the O-ring boss with the swivel. But without the swivel, this end definitely needs to go in first. scoring 100 on this that and a thousand whatever term you want to use I guess we'll leave that alone see how the cab meets to it when we get down but hydraulically it should be hooked up now Yeah, got one hose that ended up being too long after I put this elbow in. And the other one, after I fixed the, having the wrong fitting, which the adapter I got came out of a Gale package. I ordered the number and by golly, somehow or another I got the wrong thing. But it's in, this one does have some flex to it so it ain't totally tight. Cause that would be bad when things heat up and stretch and everything it could make it pull at it looks like i got some oil to wipe up now well my original plan was to try to mount the switch on the t-bar hand control here and after sitting in there with my switch and just really ain't a good place to mount it on there where my leg ain't gonna hit it or it's not gonna get close to the console over here um, Gail had a provision for a rocker switch hole there and so that's what I'm gonna do and there's even some existing wiring running back that I finally tracked down that doesn't show up in the wiring schematic but they are fortunately labeled well so I'm gonna use that to go back to power power the solenoid and put my rocker temporary rocker switch there and uh and then a fuse holder here to power it pick up power off the uh, key switch right there and uh should be good now i've got the uh, fuse holder in i got a switch it's actually for my combine but it'll work for this purpose uh, wiring so I just need to connect it under the cab. I can put this uh, console thing back on to uh, get her in place. Okay. I think she's wired up, plumbed up. We'll let the cab down and uh, turn the key on and see if the solenoids click. Well, the key is on and no smoke's rising out, so that's always good. Haven't pushed the button yet. There's red indicators on there to. So I guess I'll give her the moment of truth. I hear it clicking. Oh, 
Oh yeah. I know it's dark in there, but you'll see the light. I'll let the boom down. I'll go up with the flashlight. Let the boom down. Um, haven't cycled the uh, remote yet, but I'm not seeing any sign of leaks. I'll lift the cab back up to double check that, but um, looking pretty good. So I thought I would hook this loop line up to it and that'll help purge the air out and show me if it's working or not. All right, let's see what happens. for that for my loop line anyways those were looking pretty ragged so but it looks like it works I just got to wait for the new toggle switch uh, here to this ain't the right size one this was extra I have for my combine um, I got one coming should be here tomorrow and that'll snap right in and it'll be good my original thought was to put it on this controller but I just, uh, my leg's gonna be close, so underneath wasn't really gonna work. Uh, have wires coming up and stuff, and finally I decided to just go ahead and I cut out the, uh, the decal goes over that. So there was the hole there and I could feel it and decided that was a way to go. And then uh, this is where the horn would go if you had one. And now it's the fuse holder for that. So, I guess that should have at least uh, purged the lines out and uh, I can uh, pop the cab up and see if there was any leaks and uh, top off the oil and wait for that switch to come and she'll be done. Okay, I got new hoses on my loop line. My new switch came and my giant wad of keys kind of hides it. It's just a pipe fitting that needs to crank down a little more. I think she's ready to rock and roll. Just needs some attachments. There's what it looks like without my big wad of keys in a way. Not quite as convenient as being on a T-bar, but it was easier. It won't be too far out of the way. Probably no form if I'm not gonna use it. I guess I can always move it later if I really think it needs it. But at least it's labeled auxiliary and, and the horn is now a fuse. Well, it's looking dry. There's a little bit of moisture there from when I was hooking lines up because I didn't drain the system, so there was a little bit coming out. And I hooked up the power beyond. But I'm not seeing where it leaked over there. Anything fresh. Nothing under the fittings there. It's kind of nice to... Uh, 
that oil was under that side before. Couldn't get under there with a rag to wipe it off. I think we're good. Excellent. Now I just need to get some toys to utilize that. I want to get a rock bucket with a grapple and a pole saw for trimming up around the fields. So hopefully I'll have some footage of that someday. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Appreciate it as always. We'll see you in the next one.